um, it deals with the word inclusive, include or inclusio exclusio. It's dealing with include. And it also relates to the word birth and the birthing certificates and the, uh, the actual meanings of this word. And the word exclude or include, these both words, are used in a, t a term called doublespeak quite often. The word include is also used on a bill to include what is on the bill, which means in a legal sense, what is included excludes all others. So when, so, so when they're using this word include, it's being used in a legal sense and you have to be very careful with it. Politicians love using it and so does the mainstream media because when they say something and then including something, what is included excludes all others in a legal sense. So in this video, Rowan is going to point out a couple of little things in relation to the meaning of birth and the meanings, their official meanings of what the word birth means, what it includes. <laughs> so I'll leave you with this. It's only a short video, but it's um, but it's really interesting. And uh, it's good to hear Rowan's still uh, fine and free. <laughs> Uh, take a look at this video. Thank you. Hi everyone, welcome back to the Justinian Deception channel. Uh, just a little bit more research that I wanted to sort of throw your way. Um, all this stuff I'm about to show you is, it's irrelevant, but it's kind of how they're doing it. Um, they're not even following their own laws when they do this stuff. This is sort of the best path that I can find in what they're doing. Um, when in 2014, when Rom and I found the the dog Latin, the all capitals, it killed the system. There's not like we can everything we're about to show you. We can then say is criminal. So, but I just wanted to show, show you what they should be doing within their own system, and they're not even doing this. But it's as close as I can get to showing you what. I guess their legal presumptions are and how they're justifying what they are doing to us. So uh, why you are dead. So it all, I'm going to start at the top as far as I can go. So this is the United Nations and they call it United Nations because it sounds a lot better than Vatican Collins Consolidated Slave Holdings. <laughs> um, that's the Roman Caesar's wreath there, Rome. So the Vatican is Rome. This is running the world and it's doing it by trusts. Uh, the trusts are obviously all counterfeit. So all the documents I'm about to tell you about or talk about um, are counterfeit and you can't use them for anything other than operating illegally in this system. Calling it the United Nations is like going to an Apple store and buying a bag of apples. It's a private company. It's nothing to do with what it's called. All the people there are appointed. They're not elected. And they're all there to run CITUS Trust, International CITUS Trust. Now, CITUS just means location. So I'll show you how this uh, ties in with you and how you ended up with a contract with the Vatican, albeit a counterfeit one. This is the... Trust Hague Convention Act 1991. So put into the Commonwealth of Australia via the company called Australia. You can see the logo there, the All Capitals Australia. And uh, the rat and the chook. So this Act, Chapter 1, Article 1. So this is just all the laws on trust. So the first thing you should be asking yourself is why the United Nations has a trust law in the Commonwealth of Australia and why are they recognizing them you know this could be done individually between each country via treaties but they're doing it this way so this is how you ended up with your contract it's a bit wordy so i'll try and get through it for you so the purpose of this convention the term trust refers to a legal relationship created inter vivis or on death 
on death is the one we're interested into vivos is during life which is uh, by a gift by a person so remember the person is a corporation company or society from the crimes act 1900 i think it was the set law so the set law is the one who settles all the debt so what happens is when someone becomes your trustee they become a set law when you're dead that's the trustee when you die becomes your executor that's the difference um, an executor is the trustee of a dead estate so when the assets have been placed under the control of a trustee for the benefit of a beneficiary that's the only place you'll see beneficiary now, don't talk us talk about us as coming back as beneficiaries much <laughs> I guess they never expected us to so the trust has the following characteristics and these are just all normal trust stuff that it's a trustee is not it's not part of their estate the title is in the name of the trustee so this is the corporate name that they put on your birth certificate of another person so the other person is actually you under the surname so when you're the, under the Christian name or the Christian trademark whatever they've done you're the beneficiary when you come back as trustee for yourself or trustee of a trustee of your own estate you come back as another person so they've got to put you back in there somehow that's what they've done there the trustee has a power the duty and respect which he or she is accountable so this is how they make you liable when you're a trustee to all their laws all their terms and conditions these aren't de jure laws they're all just terms and conditions that you've agreed to to be trustee of your own estate now if you have a look at the bottom there this is a really important bit the reservation by the settler of certain rights and powers and the fact the trustee may himself have rights as a beneficiary they're telling you right there that you have the right to be a beneficiary but you're not being because you're being the trustee of yourself and I said it's not necessarily inconsistent with the existence of a trust it's not inconsistent with the existence but it means you cannot be the beneficiary if you are being the trustee at the same time so you're either going to get the benefit or you're going to be paying the benefit to someone else because you can't be both in trust law that just can't cannot exist and that's the uh, you know a tr you know being a beneficiary of your own of your estate means you get the money if you're a trustee you've got to pay the money you cannot be two people in one trust that just defeats the whole purpose of a trust existing so you are a trustee of your own estate in a little company that involves the police it involves a bunch of other ranked trustees so that goes from the queen all the way down to the police to you so if you're the beneficiary all those people look after you if you are the trustee you've got to look after not only your own estate but you've got to look after all those people above you in that trustee rank that military that's what the military is for is to take care of these trusts you know to make sure your estate that you own is not taken from you but because you put yourself <laughs> back at the bottom rank of all these other trustees and there's some bit a few uh, sort of arguments going around about you know you call yourself the crown and I know that I know a few people that are doing it I don't think it's a great idea because the crown is sort of the first trustee and the police are the crown trustee so you're becoming a, a just a higher rank trustee rather than back to the beneficiary as far as I can tell so what happened article 3 of this Hague Convention on Trusts the convention applies only to trust created voluntarily and evidenced in writing so the evidence in writing is a form of information in New South Wales in Queensland it's the certificate of birth not the birth certificate uh, it's whatever your parents filled in in your jurisdiction so there'll be a long form I think in America um, that's the form that creates the evidence of the trust now your parents are actually the trustors and the registrar general becomes the trustee so your parents trusted the registrar general to look after your estate which was really a big mistake because they're not trustworthy at all um, they don't put trustor on the paperwork they put informant <laughs> google informant um, it comes up with like you know prison snitch rat fink <laughs> all these things because basically your parents sold you out so there is a trust there there should be a trust there there should be an estate there and they want to keep the estate so why the registrar general would volunteer because she volunteered because there's no requirement in the birth test and marriages act for her to be a trustee she's just meant to be the custodian the registrar of the, of the documents but 
your parents fill in the form and then on mine she stamped the back of it and said well I'm going to be the custodian of this this estate and look after it for you because she knows that she can issue a birth certificate to me back to me that will say I'll be a trustee of her so the registrar volunteered to be the trustee then you volunteered to be a trustee of the trustee now think about this are you the trustee of the registrar general of your own true de jure commonwealth of australia or have you unwittingly become the trustee of the registrar general of a foreign united states registered commonwealth of australia company owned by the eu and the european roman rothschild banking system being what could be assumed as a foreign banking cartel so is this the deceptive dry exchange? Are Australians the real beneficiaries of the foreign company registered in a foreign district such as the District of Columbia? Well, that's the question. Can you see how it goes? So the first document, the parents filled in, creates the estate. The second one appoints you as the lowest ranked trustee of that estate to look after it. It's a, it's a neat trick and it's really quite clever. And that's what they've done. So that's why the birth certificate, you've got to get rid of it. I know that a lot of people are looking at, you've got to, you know, apostille it and get it stamped and do all this stuff. I just don't think you can. I think you've just got to go back to being the beneficiary. We have no business in this world as the beneficiary. This is the trustees uh, underworld, the, the secret language, the codes, the, the devil, you know, Satan, you sat in the trustee's seat. So... I think this is what the Bible is trying to tell you. Don't eat from the tree of knowledge. Don't become trustee of yourself. Don't put the clothing on. Don't take the name. So that act, the Hague Act, is a federal act. So, and it says that basically wherever the trust is, will go by that law. So this is the New South Wales Trustee Companies Act 1964. I was looking for the nexus between trustee and company. And then I found this act. So... This is a trustee company which has basically given your estate to deal with. Uh, this act allows the Registrar General to give them your estate and it allows them to do basically what they want. So they can act as an executor which means and obtain probate and they can also obtain letters of administration which basically means they can do what they want with your estate. But obviously you're dead because they're executor. They're not trustee, they're executor. So this allows them to apply to the New South Wales Supreme Court on your certificate of birth, the first one, to obtain probate because they go, we haven't seen him, he's dead, we can't find her, she's gone. So a person named as executor may authorise trustee company to take out administration. CTA, so they can administer your estate, they can do what they want. And I found one of the companies is Perpetual, and they are administering it through JP Morgan. There's a, in one of the schedules of this act, it tells you all the companies that are doing it. So what I've done is I've tr tried to get in contact with the New South Wales Supreme Court to ask whether my FOI document, form of information of, of live birth or stillbirth, has been put through probate. And I haven't heard back yet. Um, I haven't heard back from anybody actually since I put that FOI form in. Everyone seems a bit scared of it. So trustee company may be authorised to obtain letters of administration. So letters, I guess that's a granting of authority to do what they want with a deceased estate. So instead of applying, authorise a trustee company to apply for and obtain letters of administration of the estate. So they can, yeah, do what they want then. They're running running your business and this is how they, this is how they, you, Sorry, through the US Federal Reserve, through the uh, uh, JP Morgan, back to the United Nations, how they're getting access to your estate. Because they can never own it, but because you're missing, they can use it to invest on their behalf and they can take the interest. But under the Sesquiki Buy Act, you have to give it all back. Under Section 4, that's your remedy there. Sorry, I didn't put it in this video. I should have. Um, powers to delegate trust to a trustee company. So this is a bit of the act that allows Amanda Iana in New South Wales to give your share of New South Wales as the land, the mining rights, the tax, everything to this company. Um, one thing that was interesting, when I put this act in, this book came up. And this book is, uh, this is a page of it. 
and it's called the power of attorney in Australia and New Zealand so proof of identity of donor and donee so this act is actually imprinted on the back of my form of information so this act says that this is proof of power of attorney so uh, under the Royal Trust Company's case so and the land, land titles act so they're taking your land off your Royal Trust so that's the Queen coming in taking all your stuff she's all part of this so they have to prove power of attorney now they don't have the original documents they said they destroyed them but I think they've just traded them off I don't think that that's true but I'll check on that and let you know the original so they've got a copy of that document to prove that they are the trustee because they have to have your get your dominion off you before they can give it back to you um, under a different uh, uh, under you as a different role in, in the trust uh, trustee this is pretty scary guys certificate evidence when a trustee company is executor or administrator it is by law authorized to administer the state of any deceased person so I can get a certificate so you're deceased so and what it can do is despite any act or other law to the contrary be accepted for all purposes as prima facie evidence you can't really argue it so without the production of any other proof of the death of the deceased person so regard, without any other proof, all they have to do is apply for a letter to say that they're the administrator and they, you're dead. That's it. That's your legal fiction, your legal death right there. 32A. That's, that's pretty scary law, guys. <laughs> um, of course, all those documents are forged because they're all in the all capitals. Uh, this is just 145.2, I think, of the... Criminal Code 995 or the Crimes Act. No, I can't remember which one I pulled out of. It's it's illegal at all levels anyway. So 10 years in jail for them doing what they're doing with those forms. This is why you can't have anything to do with it. This is why you don't want to be crowned. This is why you want to get back to beneficiary. And they can't identify you. You identify them. That's how it works. So um, make a false document so and this is a new south wales law here so the other one was the commonwealth this is a new south wales one make a false document to influence exercise of public duty so you can't have a false document they did get rid of all the uh false birth certificate laws though but we'll get to that oh this is just the police standards publication management so they're your co-trustee in this this is why you have your little company because you and the police are there to look after the trust together and if you and the police can't agree on something that you go to the court and then the court decides on what you should be doing best for your estate so you actually sort of become a police officer in a funny way an officer of the court um, this document is their styles manual so it says using all cap using capital letters presenting whole words in capital letters uppercase including family names and place names is not generally appropriate in business writing it's not only appropriate it's illegal 254 using a false document 255 possession of a false document 256 making or possession of equipment for making false documents part 5a this is the criminal code 1995 307a false or misleading applications 307b false or misleading information 307c false or misleading documents so yeah i'm glad that they don't consider this <laughs> generally appropriate because it's criminal Basically, use only one capital letter to begin a sentence or indicate a proper noun, e.g. a person's name. So they're telling the police right there, don't use all capitals, except. And this is, this is a strange part, guys. This is a really strange part. This applies to all New South Wales Police Force documents, except legal documents. They have to be counterfeit. So there we go that's straight out of the police style manual you can look it up uh, so the police will only make a counterfeit document if you're going to go to court uh, and they'll only commit that crime and this is interesting because under the um, the Nuremberg principles which the Rome statute the International Criminal Court operates off if you're an officer and you follow an illegal order which this is uh, you're you're screwed you're going to be charged that's what they did with all the nazis so and the that was the nuremberg principle there's another one where the 
superior officers um, are also liable. So I can't think of the name of that one offhand, I'll get it back to you. New South Wales Police, corporate branding and policy standards, well that corporate, their company, they need, con they're an equity entity, they need consent from you. And as you saw that volunteer thing earlier, in that act when you volunteer, so Amanda Anna volunteered, and so she doesn't get paid, she's got no rights in law, but then you volunteered. And then you don't have any rights in law, because volunteering e equity does not assist the volunteer. This is equity, and you volunteered, so you've got no rights at all. You, you didn't get paid to do it. And it's all forgery. It's just a New South Wales forgery one, I think. A person makes a false document with the intention that another person or another will use it. So, yep. And so that's what the police are doing. Oh, so Yamamoto principle was the uh, one that puts the high-ranking police in charge of the... They should have known what their lowest officers were doing. And so they get liability in the Inter International Criminal Court that way. My case is still going in the International Criminal Court, guys. Um, I tried to send a letter to NSW, so I just sent it back. It takes about a year to get a letter out of them. So I don't know what's going to happen there, but uh, it seems to be going okay. They seem to be taking it fairly seriously. Okay, so now I want to get down to a name of a child. This is the Birth, Deaths and Marriages Act 1995 in New South Wales. Name of child. <laughs> child being underlined. So the birth registration statement must state the name of the child. I didn't get that. I got two trademarks. However, the registrar may assign a name to the child if the name stated in the birth registration statement is a prohibited name. Just remember that. Prohibited name. We want to have a look at that. A prohibited name means a name that is, like okay, I so obscene, could not be used. So part B, number two there, because it consists or, of or includes symbols without phonetic significance. Now this is from my argument from the start, uh, that the all capitals is a trademark and therefore does not have phonetic significance. It's not a name in English. So... Uh, and D down there is contrary to the public interest for some other reason. Well, the other reason is that it's a criminal act to make a false document, which I've just shown you. So this is what they're registering. They're, they're going against their own act. And I've noticed they've been trying to now make the birth certificates a bit more compliant by putting the name in title case, but the, the original birth certificate, the form of information, is still a counterfeit document. It's still fraud. It's a forgery. It's not, not written correctly. It doesn't have phonetic significance. It's a prohibited name and therefore should not be registered under this Act. Under this Act also, um, I just want you to have a look there. This is Section 4 Definitions. Birth includes stillbirth. That's really important, guys. Remember the expressio unius exclusio alterius maxim from the last video? So the mention of the class of one thing is to the exclusion of another. So a birth includes a stillbirth. That's it. So it doesn't include a live birth. Up there above it has adult means a person who is 18 or above. Or So birth should be written. Birth means a stillbirth or live born or live birth. It doesn't say that at all. So that's, that includes, includes always comes with that caveat, that maxim. Um, and a child down the bottom includes a stillborn child. So that includes, again, excludes anything living. So you can only register dead babies under this act. According to the maxim. So this is how you get your presumption of death. So this is presumption of death of the beneficiary, because you can't be a beneficiary if you're dead. And then, as I showed you, they probate your estate, because you die because you probably didn't write a will in utero, or at a couple of days old when they killed you off. So this is what's happening. So stillbirth means the birth of a stillborn child. So isn't it interesting that birth includes and stillbirth means. See the difference in the, the way they write these things? It's really tricky. So, stillbirth means the birth of a stillborn child. So everything's telling you this is dead. So a stillborn child means a child that exhibits no signs of respiration. So here's your legal fiction that you're dead. 
So, you know, that's it right there. That, and you can only register under the Act. You can only register. You can only register a dead child. That's it. So, there's your legal fiction. Stillborn child. So this Act is only dealing with dead dead babies. It's pretty awful. Uh, but the legal fiction, once again, requires consent. How did you consent? Well, we'll get to that. Guys, the false birth certificates. We had a bunch of laws that stopped it, but they've all gone. They've all been repealed. One, two, three, four. We can get them under the false documents, but they've really tried to cover their tracks here by making themselves not liable for a false birth certificate. You think that, you know, a false birth certificate should be a crime, but yeah, it's all repealed. And it was even taken out of recently, it was taken out of the Federal Act, the, the Criminal Code 1995 has removed any anything to do, because I pointed it out to the police, I said look here's the Act, here's the crime, here's the birth certificate, and uh, the birth certificate disappeared, the Federal Police just basically stole it, and then the law changed that there's nothing to do with birth certificates being illegal, you know, false birth certificates being illegal in the Act anymore. So they're trying to get around it, so obviously we're having a bit of an effect. Uh, just a maxim from Black's Law, an error that's not resisted is approved, so you've got to be across all this stuff, guys. Sorry for the capital A there, didn't know how that happened. Um, you have to be very careful, so you've got to be very careful what you agree to. Walking, You can't even walk into that court. The police can hold you for four hours and then they've got to let you go, so don't sign anything, don't agree with anything. They'll lock you out for a bit, they've got to let you go because they've got to... The police's job is to get you to consent to the contract. That's it. And... Uh, you ha and you've got the right to consent and you've got the right not to consent and I'll show you how that works right here this is the last slide and I'll leave you with this one non potest rex subsidium rententum honorary impositionibus the king cannot load a subject with impositions against his consent she requires consent. So what they've done is created this consent system that's so complicated you'll never work out, one, how you ended up consenting, and two, how you uh, undo your consent once you've done it. It's a presumption of death. It's a use of this demonic, you know, as Rom said, bullshit Babylon language. It's everything tacit consent. It's presumptions of death when you're a baby. You died intestate because you didn't write a will. Uh, all these awful, awful tricks that these people do. And that's from Black's Law, Volume 7, page 1667. So if you want to have a look up that one. So they do require consent. And I saw once a maxim, all, so all men are created e equal, but by a series of events, they become unequal. And the series of events is the contract. Ron pointed out to me the other day that God is actually the contract. If you read the Bible, and you replace the word God with contract. <laughs> oh my God. It's oh my contract. <laughs> what happens in there is uh, it changes everything. You really start to see how the whole Bible system works. So anyway, guys, that's uh, that's how they're doing it. It's all run through the Bar Association or on the police uh, using the, you know, their own styles manuals that they shouldn't be using and giving illegal orders. And they're creating these false documents only when they're going to court but it's not a court it's just an arbitral tribunal because it requires your consent these are the king's or the queen's courts so therefore you need they need consent so it's just a really neat trick they've got of getting your consent hope you enjoyed the video i'll talk to you in the next one cheers